everyone, this is Rosie, and today we're going to be making a project bag with a see-through vinyl window. So, let's get started. You can make these pouches in any size you desire. I have two different sizes here, and I have prepared a little chart that will help you determine what size you need to cut your pieces based on the size of the pouch that you want to make. In this video, I will be making a pouch that is 9 inches by 9 inches, and that is an approximate size because once everything is sewn, it will be slightly smaller, but I'm starting out with a size that will be 9 inches by 9 inches. So, on my chart, I'm going to write in the width and the height, so that's going to be 9 inches by 9 inches. Now, the first piece that I need to cut out is my feature fabric, and the feature fabric will be the fabric that shows through this vinyl window and I have that piece right here. My feature fabric needs to be the width of the pouch and the height of the pouch. So that will be 9 inches by 9 inches and that means my feature fabric that I've cut out here is 9 inches wide by 9 inches high. Then for the pouch back I need to take the width of my pouch which is 9 inches and add on to that 2 inches. So 9 plus 2 is 11 inches for the width, and then for the height, I need to take the height of my pouch and add on one inch. So nine plus one equals 10 inches. That means I need to cut out my back 11 inches wide by 10 inches high. And the reason why we're cutting this back piece out a little larger than the feature fabric is because this piece is going to be for the back and then it is going to fold over towards the front to make a faux binding. Then we need to have some zipper strips. The zipper strip is going to be the width of the pouch, so that's 9 inches, and the height is as desired. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is these are my zipper strips right here, and depending on the size of my pouch, I might want these to be a little wider or more narrow. So on this one here, this smaller pouch, I cut these out one and a half inches high. But on my larger pouch, I cut it out two inches high. So for the larger one, I'm going to make my height two inches. So these are my zipper strips right here, and I've already cut them out nine inches wide by two inches high. Then the next thing that I need is to cut out a piece of vinyl. And your vinyl needs to be the width of your pouch, which is 9 inches. And the height of the vinyl is going to be the height of the pouch minus 1 half inch. So 9 inches high minus a half inch is 8.5 inches. So my vinyl has been cut out 9 inches wide by 8.5 inches high. And then I need to cut out a zipper. Now I am using Zipper by the Yard and the zipper width is one and a quarter inches. And you want to cut out your zipper the same width of the pouch. So the width of the pouch is nine inches. So I'm cutting my zipper to nine inches in width. And then you'll need a zipper tab. And my zipper tab needs to be two inches wide by one and a quarter inches high. And then you need to use some interfacing. You can use whatever you like here. If you want to use a fusible fleece, that's fine. I'm just using some woven interfacing, and this is woven fuse. And the interfacing needs to be cut the same size as the width and the height of your pouch. So the width of the pouch is 9 inches, and the height of the pouch is also 9 inches. So my interfacing is cut 9 inches wide by 9 inches high. Now if you'd like to use this worksheet, I will have it posted on my website for you to download. And you will find the link to this chart in the description below the video. We're going to prep our pieces for sewing. So you want to start with your zipper strips here, and you want to mark one half inch away from each long edge. I like to use a chalk wheel to do that. So you can see the white line 
is the one half inch away from the edge. And then you just want to turn those edges under and then just press them. And you'll do this to both zipper strips. Next you're going to take the piece for your back and you need to determine which one of these edges you're putting the zipper on. For me, I'm putting it up here along the 11 inch length. So what I'm going to do is mark in one inch along this side edge, this side edge, and one inch in along this bottom edge with my chalk wheel. So you'll just go ahead and mark those three edges. And once we've marked them, we're going to iron them in, press them in. And now that I have these three sides marked, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to press those edges in towards the wrong side, right along the chalk line. And now that I have those edges ironed in, I can take my woven interfacing. I'm going to place it right in between those marks where I ironed. Now you may not be using the same interfacing as me, so just follow the manufacturer's instructions for ironing down the interfacing. And once you have your interfacing fused in, just make sure that your edges there are still folding in nicely and then you want to take the raw edge and fold it up to that original line that we pressed in there and then you're just going to press and you'll fold it in again and press again and this is going to be our faux binding so just do that all the way around. And then fold in again. And press. And do that to all three edges. Then you'll take your feature fabric and turn it over so it's face down and then you're going to fuse the other piece of interfacing to the feature fabric. Next you want to take your zipper and you want to measure one half inch down from the top edge on both sides of the zipper tape. So measure down one and a half inches make a mark on both sides and then you're going to take the zipper and you're going to fold back on that mark and then you're going to fold right up to the zipper teeth just like that okay and you're going to take a clip and hold it in place do the same thing on the other side fold back on that line and then fold that line right up to the zipper teeth and put in a clip and then you want to make sure that both of the edges are even so the zipper teeth should be even here and you can go over to the sewing machine and sew this in place so what I like to do is I just go and I drop my needle right in this point right here 
And once I do that, I can remove my clip, and then I just sew a little line right along here. I do that on both sides. If you don't want to do it on the sewing machine, you can just take some needle and thread and just stitch that little corner right in place there and it will hold for you. And then the other thing that you need to do is take your zipper tab and you're going to sew the zipper tab face down onto the zipper, onto the right side of the zipper and the right side of the zipper is the side that has the zipper pull. And you'll clip this in place and you'll sew one half inch away from the edge. So one half inch away from this zipper tab edge and the zipper. And I'm going to go and do that off camera right now. Now I have the zipper tape secured so I can cut off the ends there on both sides. And I've also sewed my zipper tab onto the zipper one half inch away from the edge. So the next thing I want to do is take the zipper tab, pull it open, and flip it over. Then I'll bring this edge in towards the end of the zipper and then fold over again. And then you can go over to the sewing machine and sew one eighth of an inch away from this folded edge right here. Now I'm ready to sew the zipper onto the feature fabric. So I want to take my feature fabric here and mark in three quarters of an inch on each side. Let's do that with a chalk wheel so you can see it a little bit better. So three quarters of an inch on each side. And then the zipper should fit between your chalk marks. Now, I'm going to start by matching the end of the zipper tab up to the chalk mark here. You want the zipper to be placed just like this. So the wrong side of the zipper is going to be facing the right side of the fabric and the zipper pull needs to be on the left side. So I'm just going to use some Wonder Clips to do that. And then we'll go over to the sewing machine. We're going to sew this down one quarter of an inch away from the zipper tape. Now I'm going to sew the zipper down and I'm using a stitch length of 3.0 and we're just sewing one quarter of an inch away from this edge. You want to make sure that you keep the edge of the fabric and the edge of the zipper tape even with each other. And you need to start with your zipper open. And you do want a back stitch. When you get close to the zipper pull, just stop with your needle down, lift up your presser foot, and pull the zipper pull past the foot. And then you can finish sewing all the way across. To keep the um, zipper tape even, I like to keep my fingers close to the presser foot and push towards the presser foot. It helps to keep the tape and the edge of the fabric lined up. Because the zipper tends to want to shift in this way. And then back stitch at the other end. Now we're going to take the back and clip it to this side of the zipper right here. So opposite of where we sewed on our feature fabric. So you'll put the fabric right sides to the right side of the zipper and you want to match up where this fold is. This fold should match up along this edge but we're not going to sew through the fold. So you can go ahead and match it up but then make sure that you open it because you do not want to sew through that. And put in a clip and the same thing at this end. Where we folded in the fabric and ironed it down that should match up with the opposite edge. So line it up, but then open up the fold and clip. And then you can clip all along the length here. And then after you're done clipping it, 
and then you'll go over to your sewing machine and you just want to sew right from this edge to this edge and you'll follow your previous line of stitching. So ready to sew the back on. Remember to unfold both sides. You do not want to sew through these folds here. And again, I'm stitching with a stitch lane of 3.0 and I'm just going to follow my previous line of stitching. My zipper pull is at the other end. Okay, now that I'm getting close to the zipper pull, I want to stop with my needle down, pick up my presser foot, and pull the zipper out of the way, and then I can finish sewing to the end. And I want to stop right there and back stitch. After you've sewn on the back, you can open this up like this. And you want to take this piece right here and match it up with these edges of this piece of interfacing that's on the back. And then you can fold this in. This is the faux binding. Just clip it in there. We're only doing this right now so that we can iron everything down in place. So now that we have that clipped, you want to pull on this up here and take your iron. You want to iron right along this fold and right here we want to iron this down. So this should be ironed down one quarter of an inch. and then iron along the fold up here and then again you want to take this top edge right here and iron that down one quarter of an inch and then you can flip it over and you want to do the same thing you want to iron right along this edge right here and these are the edges that we folded down one quarter of an inch you can just Give those another little bit of a pressing. And then you'll go over to the sewing machine and you want to top stitch all along this edge right here, one eighth of an inch away from this fold. I'm going to use the middle of this toe as my guide to sew my one eighth inch top stitching. And I'm top stitching with a stitch length of 3.0. And back stitch. And back stitch again. Next, you'll take your zipper strips, and they're going to get sewn to this side of the zipper. So you want to line it up with the edges of your feature fabric. So you'll just line up those edges and clip. And then once it's clipped into place, you're going to do the same exact thing that you did when you sewed on these pieces. You're just going to sew one quarter of an inch away from the edge of the zipper tape. Then after this first one is sewn on, you'll take the other zipper strip, you'll clip that in place making sure that you match up all your edges and you'll follow your previous line of stitching on this side. Now some people prefer to clip everything all at once and sew all at once and that's fine. If you're comfortable doing that you certainly can go ahead and do that. It's really a matter of personal preference. I like to go ahead and sew on one side at a time. Now I'm ready to sew. When I sew on my first strip, I don't have to sew all the way across. I'm just starting right where my zipper tab is. And I'm sewing with a stitch length of 3.0. Back stitch. 
My zipper pull is at the other end. And then when you get close to your zipper pull, just stop with the needle down again, lift your presser foot, and move that foot past. And then you can sew off the end. And back stitch. I have the second zipper strip clipped into place, and now I'm just going to sew it. This time you'll be sewing from edge to edge. So from this edge of the zipper strip all the way to this edge of the zipper strip. And all you need to do is follow your previous line of stitching. I did need to open up my zipper a little bit to get started because my zipper pull is right here. It would have been up here. And just follow along your previous line of stitching until you get to the edge. I'm at my zipper pull. So I'm just going to pull it open again. Or pull it closed, I should say. Make sure that your edges are staying even. And back stitch. Now my zipper strips are sewn into place. And I just want to match up these two folded edges. And just sort of hold them in place and iron everything down nicely. Now if you're using a nylon zipper, you do need to be very careful that you don't melt your zipper with your iron. So I'm just going to iron both sides here. I like to keep these edges nice and even. After you have this iron down, you want to take your piece and flip it this way and open this up. And you'll take your vinyl and you want to take the top edge of the vinyl and you want to butt it right up to this line of stitching. So this line of stitching right here, you're just going to butt it up there and you're going to make sure that the edge of the vinyl is matching up with the edge of the zipper strip. And then you can fold this back and put a clip in to hold it into place and then you'll do the same thing. Just make sure that your vinyl is budding up to that line of stitching and make sure that your edges are even. And then you're going to go over to the sewing machine and you're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from this folded edge and one eighth of an inch away from this folded edge and you will be stitching through the top zipper strip, the vinyl, and the bottom zipper strip all at the same time. Now if you're worried that this is going to shift on you, which it has not at all for me, so I think it'll be fine, you can use some double sided tape to hold the vinyl in place. Okay, I'm ready to sew. So I'm going to start with this edge right here and sew one eighth of an inch away from the edge. It really does not matter uh, if you sew this edge or this edge first. I'm just going to start with this one here. And I'm sewing with a stitch length of 3.0. And you want to sew all the way across. and back stitch at the other end. And now we can go ahead and top stitch the opposite edge. Back stitch and sew all the way across. Now that the vinyl is sewn into the zipper strips, we can go ahead and unclip 
this bottom here. And we want to match up the bottom edges of the vinyl with the bottom edge of our feature fabric. So make sure the bottom is all lined up. Make sure that your edges are all lined up. And then you can go ahead and refold in that faux binding and clip everything into place. Now you want to make sure that your top edges are even here. So this top edge needs to be even with this top edge. So I'm just going to put a clip in there temporarily and make sure also on this side that it's all matched up there. We'll put a clip in there. And then what you want to do is start folding these edges in. We're actually going to be doing some nice mitered corners here. If you prefer to leave them square, that's fine. It's up to you. But I'm just going to clip everything temporarily for now. And then when you get up to the corner here, you're just going to fold this in very neatly and then fold it over across this top edge. Just make it look nice and pretty. And clip that in place. And then you'll do the same thing on this side. Just want to clip everything in place the same way you did over here. I have my faux binding all clipped into place. You want to make sure that everything is flat on both sides. So now we're going to work on making a mitered corner on each end here. To do the mitered corners, you want to release a few of the clips and you want to open this up. And this long edge right here is going to get folded in like this. Okay, so you have everything folded just as it should be along the length. And then you're going to take this end here and you're going to fold it down just like this. And then you're going to take this end, this side, fold it down just like this towards this edge right here. And then you're going to fold it up. And then you're starting to form your miter here. So all you have to do is play with it a little bit until it looks nice, until you have a nice miter there. And then you'll clip it in place. And you'll replace some of these clips here to hold everything down. And now we'll do it on the other side so you can see it again. So you're going to take out these clips. And you're going to fold this up. But this part right here is going to stay folded in along the side, just like that. And then you're going to take this end right here and you're going to fold it down to this edge right here, just like that. And then you're going to take this part right here and fold it right to the edge of the panel right there and then fold it up again. And then again you'll start to form that miter and you just play with it until it looks nice and laying flat. So here is what your mitered corner looks like on both sides. And now we're going to go over to the sewing machine and we're going to do some top stitching all along the folded edge. So one eighth of an inch away from the folded edge on all three sides. Now I'm going to do the top stitching on the faux binding and again I'm sewing with a stitch length of 3.0. You do want a back stitch. Now I'm getting down to my mitered corner and what I want to do 
is sew until I get to that corner right there. And I want to get right past that fold where the miter is and drop my needle down. And once I drop my needle down in that fold right there, then I can pivot. I'm actually going to take one more stitch. And now I'm going to pivot. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I want to get past the fold of the miter. And now I'm going to pivot. And then you'll just sew up this side until you get to the top. And then you want to back stitch. So there you go. This is what it looks like from the front, and this is what it looks like from the back. And in addition to using this for your various projects, they're also great for organizing other items, such as your chargers and cords. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. Please like and subscribe.